Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is again Ralph Brown from Zurich in Switzerland, and I'm going to present you two pink lesions today. Again, for all my unknowns, I'm going to use the following algorithm, which we went through in the previous podcasts. So if ever you have any question, there's a separate podcast on that. Let's continue with case number seven. Case number seven is a 68-year-old lady. We're on the upper arm left. And this lesion appeared over a couple of years. She says it's basically a year and a half. So this is the lesion we're talking about. And I give you the demoscopy picture of it. Ready? So let's take a look at it. Is the lesion melanocytic or non-melanocytic? First question. So do we see network? Yes, we see network here at the periphery. And then when we see network at the periphery and not in the lesion, we have to go back. So we have to see if there's a sun-damaged skin with freckling. So it's not sure. We cannot say with 100% certainty that this pigmentation is belonging to the background skin. So this reticulation that which we see here belongs as well to the background skin or if it's part of the lesion. That's hard to say. So let's presume if it is, it would be a melanocytic lesion. And then we would move on with the other algorithm. So if it's not, we'd have a different point. So we move on and look for specific criteria for BCC. BCC criteria here. And we would look for arborizing blood vessels. Well, we don't really see arborizing blood vessels. We see plenty of blood vessels, lots of blood vessels, but there are no arborizing ones. So we continue looking and we look for the criteria of seborrheic keratosis. There are no criteria for seborrheic keratosis in this lesion. Do we see criteria for vascular lesion, for angioma, angiokeratoma? There's none. Do we see any specific vascular criteria for non-melanocytic lesions, such as hairpin vessels, glomerular vessels, pearls on the string or corona vessels? No. We don't see any of those. And that brings us again to level six, where we look for specific morphological criteria for melanocytic lesions, which are the comma vessels, the dotted vessels, the linear and irregular vessels, so the corkscrew vessels, the atypical hairpin vessels, and just the pinkish U. What we see here are clear-cut atypical hairpin vessels that you see here. They're not surrounded by a whitish halo as we would expect them in keratinizing tumors such as SCC or in seborrheic keratosis. We see some degree of comma vessels, like here. But we see very heterogeneous vessels. So we, I would call them linear and irregular vessels. There's another hairpin vessel here. So they're very polymorphic vessels. And that brings us to level six. We found specific criteria for melanocytic lesions, and then we have to exclude if this is a nevus. We are here with the melanocytic lesion, so we now we need to decide if this is a nevus or if this is melanoma. And if it's the only choice you got, that can only be melanoma. And that was 1.2 millimeter a melanotic melanoma. Case number eight, let's move on to the next case. We are on the back of a 68 year old lady. This is a seborrheic keratosis. This is the legion, rather large at higher power. Leave you some time with the legion. And I show you three, since the legion is so big, I show you three demoscopy slides. Slide number one. Slide number two. Slide number three. And again, first question, is this a melanocytic lesion? Do we see pigment network anywhere? No. Do we see aggregated globules? No. Do we see streaks at the periphery? Let's go back. No, there are none. Do we see homogeneous blue area like in the blue nevus? No. 
If we didn't find any, and this is the case, we move on to level 2 and we'll look for the criteria of basal cell carcinoma, which are arborizing telangiectasia, ulceration, leaf-like areas, periphery, multiple blue-gray ovoid nests, multiple blue-gray dots and globules, crystalline structures or chrysalis structures, shiny white lines, and spoke wheel like structures, which we see mainly in superficial BCCs. Do we see any of them? Let's go back. So we have some ulceration here. This is a blood crust. This is ulceration. This is a serum crust. It's a yellow, yellowish serum crust. Then we have multiple dots and globules, blue-gray dots and globules. We have a little beginning spoke wheel here, up here. Mainly we see arborizing telangiectasia here and here and here. Some leaf-like area here. Second part, again, lots of ulceration. So it's a very fragile tumor here. You see all of this is ulceration down here. All of this is ulceration. And here. You have some blue-gray ovoid nests up here. And here you have lots of arborizing telangiectasia here. Multiple blue-gray dots and globules here. I don't really see nice leaf-like areas here. And you cannot expect to see any crystalline or chrysalis-like structures because this image has apparently not been taken with polarized light, so you won't see those. Next slide, again we see arborizing telangiectasia here, 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 some pressure artifacts, some ulceration, blue-gray ovoid nest, again ulceration, arborizing telangiectasia, ulceration. And the diagnosis is basal cell carcinoma. Again, for any feedback and questions, don't hesitate to contact me at dermoscopy at icloud.com and especially tell us what you like, what you would like us to address in the future podcasts and what you don't like about it. So your feedback is very important to us. And I'd like to thank you for your attention.